Hi everybody, this is Terry and Melissa from Nations Travels. Today we visited the Coker Museum in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Uh, this place is filled with a lot of old uh, cars and motorcycles. They have some airplanes hanging from the ceiling and they also have some old advertising signs from, uh, from way back that uh, really look good all around the place. But if you're ever in Chattanooga, you should really stop by and take a look look uh, in here. And uh, we thought we'd just let you see what it looked like in there. And uh, if you like this video, we appreciate it if you give us a thumbs up and subscribe. So y'all enjoy. Thanks. There's a big hearted Smitty sign. This looks like an old tour bus, uh, open air. It's really neat. And here's somebody's dirt track car. Says it was Bobby May. Here's on 57 Chevrolet Convertible. Looks like it was also a dirt track car. Here's a rear tail light display. It looks like identification chart. Here's old restored cash register, it looks like. Here's a nice old Ford pickup truck, looks like it's still in, I guess will be considered original condition. Even got the wire wheels. This is a 1934 pickup. I guess that's honest Charlie himself back there, or a poster of him. And there's an old Pepsi machine that I hadn't seen that model before. I don't know if I've ever seen that particular model before. Here's a display case of some old uh, retro speed parts. I just opened the door to enter this room, and when I opened the door, the first thing I said was, wow, if you enjoy cars and like cars, you would enjoy coming here and looking at this. Over here is an old Whizzer uh, bicycle slash motorcycle. I'm thinking that, uh, I know at one time there were some motors that you could buy to adapt to put onto a bicycle, but I think this one actually came from a manufacturer made this way. And here's a Simplex uh, motorbike from 1952. A lot of these displays have cards on and have some information about it, but there's, there's just too many for me to be able to read all of them today. But you really need to get yourself down here in Chattanooga to see this collection. Here's a 308 Ferrari that was made famous by Magnum P.I. Older Jaguar and Austin Healy, and of course, everybody recognizes the Doodle Bug, especially cool with the luggage rack on top. There's a 55 Chevrolet two door Ford Top Bel Air. I've always loved those cars. 54 Buick, and then I know a lot of people are familiar with these. Uh, little Mustangs and they started making them in 64. This particular one's a 66. Uh, to me it looks very similar. There's a 1955 Ford F100 and uh, they left it with its patina on it. And yeah it's really nice to see these things. It still has an original wood bed in it. Back back there, a couple of Indian motorcycles. I think that's a maybe a, a VSA. That's a Honda up there. And a little further down, there's a Honda 350. When I was a teenager in high school, it seemed like a lot of guys had these things in the parking lot at work. They hurt school, right? 
17 Harley Davidson with a side car. They really put some detail in the paint on this car right here. It's called Golden Green. It looks like it's been uh, previewed before in uh, Street Rider. I see a couple of old jukeboxes up around the corners of the stage they have back here. This is really cool right here. Chattanooga Whiskey Company. And it's got whiskey barrels on the back. It says this is a 1913 white. And here's a 1913 Cadillac. And the windshield is missing. But look how wide the back seat of this car is back there. A little bit bigger than the love seat it looks like. But in 1913, this this had to be the car to have in 1913. And here's old Plymouth uh, fire truck. There, there's just such a collection of vehicles in here. It's amazing. And also, don't don't forget to check out these uh, neon signs from yesteryear that they have. You can see uh, they also have airplanes hanging from the roof. This is just an amazing place to look at. Here's a 1941 Diamond T, which I'm not even familiar with that car uh, brand. But anyway, he's got an old racer loaded up on, up on the back here. Here's an old white bus. Again, it looks like it's a really wide vehicle. And there's another bus here beside it. It's also white. It's a 1936. Here's another one. Wow, look at look at that one. I don't know how well my camera's picking it up, but that is just really a sharp vehicle, especially from 1925. And this looks like some type of service uh, truck right here. It says 1921 Federal Fast Express. Again, it's another vehicle I'm just not that familiar with, but it's really neat to see. And they also have some old vending machines. Here's an old cigarette machine. And uh, they used to put mirrors on the front of them, so when you got your cigarettes, I guess you could check your hair. Same with this old uh, candy machine here. They would have whatever candy it was displayed right here in these front uh, slots so you can pick what you wanted. And this would be like lifesavers or gum right here. Got a Trans Am sitting in here. Uh, maybe 79 or 80 models, something like that. Uh, it has current, current license plates on it, so they still drive this one. Here's an old, unrestored 1955 Chevrolet convertible. And uh, this looks probably like what a teenager would have drove to work in the late, or to school rather, in the late 60s. The seats are all uh, torn up and everything. It's just an old used car back in the day, but that's what it reminds me uh, of. And right beside of the 67 uh, Camaro Rally Sport. Auto Core uh, Transportation Big, which I said it was. Uh, precursor to the bus but how do you like the way the driver just sit out here in the open uh, it was built in 1912 but at least it does have a roof over it in case it rains but I guess if you're driving the water will probably hit you in the face too as you're going down the road well these are some nice cars here this is a Winston and this is a 1914 Mitchell this is a 1909 Thomas Flyer, and it is just a really nice looking car to have been built in 1909. I mean, it just really, really is something to see. Here's a 1936 Ford Woody Wagon, and uh, 
and they were very popular for years and I still like uh, the look of the wood on the vehicles. Here's a 1932 Ford sitting beside a uh, Scout International. I have seen this uh, guy before with a tire up there, but I can't remember who he is. On this wide uh, that I showed a little earlier, I happen to walk through again. I just happen to notice that each seat back through there, each row, has its own door getting in and out. So that's really, really something. This car to me screams luxury from back in the day. It's just so elegant. Got the low uh, roof line there. Got the massive grill here in the front. The dual spare tires. This is really one fancy little car. And the next one's pretty impressive too. It's a 1924 Maramon. This is a 1919 Franklin, and it, what impresses me about this vehicle, it looks like they had aerodynamics in mind maybe when they designed this because the front end slopes up, and then as it gets to the windshield, the two sides of the windshield come to a point as if it would help break through the wind. I don't know if that's what their intentions were, but that's what it looks like. And Inside, it looks like it's huge as, as far as the height goes in there. It's just like a, a big shipping container as well. There's an old neon Via Beatrix sign. And there's something you don't see very often. That is a Sears motorcycle. about it. it just says 1913 Sears Deluxe and there's some different skaters up there and I see the little Michelin man back there on the, on the air compressor it looks like there's a few old racing cars they kept in original condition. And that's a Stutz Bearcat right there. You yeah, have the, the amount of cars and motorcycles and the weather display, it's just, it's just awesome. Absolutely awesome. Got a Ford tractor sign here. And then just a standard Ford sign. Below the Indian sign, I see there's a couple of uh, little pedal cars up there too, I didn't mention that. They do have a shop area back here where they do still rec restore cars here. And I see they got a couple of projects in the works over here right now. And up overhead, I see they've got uh, a couple of motorcycles, another pedal car. And I've even got what looks like the roof of a General Lee and uh, both the driver's side and passenger side of the doors up there. And also store some wheels up there. It looks like it's some type of hoist system we got across there that's uh, the airplane sitting on. And I don't know if you can see it, but there's an old moon pie sign back, back in the back, back, back there. Here's old Porsche 356. I think it's what model it is. Here's some more cars back here in the back that I'm not familiar with. This one's a race car of some type. 1925 Frontiac. I think it's funny if you can say it. But I, I'm, I'm sure I'm saying it's wrong. Seen it wrong. But anyway, there's a Bugatti. And it looks like there's more old parts on display back there. And they've even got a old RCA Victor uh, Victrola speaker and, and the dog that was their trademark for years for RCA. Coat machine in the corner. They've also got this old uh, icon flip uh, cord moving machines. You put in a nickel and look in, and the, uh, the cords flip over to create the old uh, movie scenes. 
this car chassis that's sitting up here on the wall, I don't know if you can see the engine, it's a 1917 Chevrolet, and it has a V8 engine in it, but it's a completely different design than what we have today. Uh, let me see if I can zoom up there. Yeah, you know, I've noticed the part where we go in through the side for the intake. Number. 